to the curb market and I was just having some thoughts that I thought I would throw out there here's what they are first of all the pollen has fallen on us around here and I have like some windshield wiper marks of just like yellow and clear it's kind of funny but I wanted to say this um oh yes first of all if you are eating a lot of fruit in the day are you trying to do like maybe Maybe you're not trying to incorporate anything but fruit and you're finding you just cannot seem to satisfy the hunger you feel like you're bulked up and all that and your belly's full and you feel like you have what happens to me is if I just have fruit okay without balancing that with greens of some sort I become hungry like I could eat let me just give an example I could do a green smoothie of let's say Again, I'm not saying slim down on your calories. This is just an example. I could eat 10 bananas plain, okay, spotty, ready to go, all right, with, with some water versus five bananas with about a quarter pound of greens and water. We won't even say the chia seeds. And the difference in those two, the two elements really of the greens, the one element is this. Well, and the difference in the calories Y'all, I could go for probably three more hours if I have those greens. Why is that? I really feel like it's the balancing act between the the fruit and the greens. You know, the mineral content. There is a, a more balancing act of the blood sugar. And some people don't seem to have this problem. Maybe it's just me and a few others. So maybe this is for you, friend. But the thing to me is I used to have blood sugar problems years ago. I would constantly become shaky, pass out, fall out everywhere. Um, I really like to balance the sugar, especially if I'm going to have bananas or something higher in sugar. Uh, mangoes do that to me too if I don't combine them with something. And maybe you're thinking, well, Tanya, I don't want to just have a green smoothie all the time. Okay, so don't. Maybe just have your bananas wrapped up in romaine. And if you think that's disgusting, it's probably because you haven't tried it. Or maybe it's a it's an acquired taste, but I really love it. It's yummy. Um, they're real sweet with the crispness of the romaine. Really, butter leaf lettuce would be my all-time favorite with that. Um, you could also just dice that up on top of some spinach. You could throw in and if you throw in some berries in there, I tend to find that those two fruits digest okay together unless you are really having extreme digestive problems and then don't combine those two. But it depends on where you are again, where you are again. But the thing is, balancing the sugar so you don't feel like you're constantly, um, I can even remember back in the day when I was, you know, trying to just eat fruit all day. I can remember being on the playground with my class and having to call my ex-husband and say, please, can you bring me some bananas or fruit or something like that? I felt so shaky, but yet I had had thousands of calories in the day, you see? Um, so keep that in mind. Here's another thing. If you eat fruit right before bed, it can also cause you to wake up to be hungry. I really find that if I have fruit and greens all day, and I know y'all are tired of hearing me say this, but it's just my story and what works for me. So turn me off if you need to you know if you're like please Tanya no more stop the pain okay <laughs> uh, anyway so if you have fruit before bed you can wake up kind of feeling hungry you know what I mean but I tell you what I find really works for me is having those huge veggie meals at night you know whether I'm blending up some raw soups whether I'm making up huge salads, maybe I'm making a zoodles, koodles, badoodles dish, veggie noodles, you know. Um, you can also even make noodles out of pumpkin, butternut squash. I showed that on my channel not long ago. And um, acorn squash, lots of, very yummy and hearty and very satisfying. Having a lot of tomatoes in your meal at night. Now, if you are offended, if your body does not take well to the nightshades, I want to tell you this too. Hold out hope for that because I used to be very affected by nightshades, peppers and all that, tomatoes, no way. Um, but as my gut tract healed and my body became less dis-ease, you know, less, less not at ease, and now it's at ease, 
I can tolerate those things because again they're fresh whole ripe raw fruits and vegetables you know it's when your body's been in such a, a mangle tangle that it doesn't do right you know but it can it can be at ease again but anyway what I was going to say was when you have a lot of these veggies at night especially incorporating celery you can slim the celery um, stock down by making little noodles you can use your julienne peeler or your Titan veggie peeler on that and it makes delicious noodles and then you can chop my mother does not like the texture of celery because she would be vomiting pretend like she was vomiting right now so if you don't like that then you could make them into noodles and then chop them into little pieces that way you just get the bite and crunch and saltiness and you don't get those strings running through your teeth which weird her out so you know do what you need to also if you would like to have a celery juice that's another thing adding celery in with your snack in the afternoon all these things can help with your salt cravings and i'm talking about that because someone on the comments and i'll try to come back and say your name um was talking about how to kick the salt cravings here's the thing the less salt you have the less salt you're gonna want when you can get all the salt out of your diet um, you're not going to want that anymore. You will feel like an heirloom tomato is quite a salty punch. You will feel like those dressings that I have, the base of um, celery or even another bulking base like um, zucchini, but yet I've got either wakame seaweed or kelp or dulse in there are quite salty. You see, the taste buds change and what they change is to their the state they're supposed to be in, their childlike state, you know? So, um, it, beginning again, you know, renewing your tongue. Uh, the tongue is one of the first things that regenerates itself, so you can um, be encouraged by that, that after a few days, if you'll just get off all of it, you can be free of that addiction, you know? And really, to me, salt, I just don't need it. It will be a great embalming agent for me. You know, I, I don't want to be embalmed. I want to live. I want to move freely. I don't want my joints to be. Some people can tolerate some of that, but I can't. Um, and I get lots of natural sodium from my veggies, okay? From my greens, all these different things. So keep that in mind. But if you are trying to get off the salt, First of all, get off that um, ionized table salt. It's very toxic. Go to like Himalayan pink salt or something like that and then gradually wean off that by using less and less. Really, I think the cold turkey approach is best to that because the sooner you can get it out, cold turkey, let's say for example, you went on a fast or you went on, which I'm gonna talk more about soon, or you went on a green smoothie cleanse, something that had no salt, after a few days, you would have rid yourself of that craving, that addiction, you know? You wouldn't want it anymore, and if you put it in your mouth, your mouth would like, like curdle in, you know? So, um, what else? If you don't want to get off of it cold turkey, start using less and less and start incorporating celery, tomatoes, these veggies, dulse kelp, and wakame. That wakame seaweed is really delicious. It's very savory and very salty. It does not smell like fish. It does not smell like sea. It doesn't smell like seaweed. Okay, some people are weirded out by that. I, I don't enjoy kelp as much because of it. I think it's very pungent and uh, it has a very strong smell to it. So, um, I want you to just keep that in mind that where there's a will, there's a way, right? And, and today's the day, not, not tomorrow. What are we waiting on? I mean, what is it we're waiting on? Sometimes people are, some, everybody's at a different place, you know, but it runs across the board. What are you waiting on that's keeping you from doing your next step? What are you waiting on? Tragedy to not be on you? Stress to not be on you? Your husband to do right? Your wife to do right? You to find a husband or wife? You to find a partner? Someone to love you when you know that love is already internal? What if we actually quit seeking approval and completion from the outside and reach inside where it really is? What a time saver. Bam. That's the only way you can really be complete. It's when you know that comes from inside. You know, look inside. 
So anyway, I just want to say I love y'all, and maybe we'll come back later in the kitchen of love and light and make a little dinner together. So see you later, alligators.